All right, what's going on guys? So in this video, we're gonna go through a full upper body workout vlog that's very simple and effective. So we're gonna start with some bench press, hit a few sets, try and crush some personal records. And then we're gonna go into some one arm dumbbell rows, which is my favorite row variation. Then we're gonna probably do a little bit of rear delts and a little bit of biceps. So yeah, as you guys can see, very icy, very snowy. So we gotta drive fucking slow. But uh, yeah, and then afterwards, I'll take you guys through some post-workout nutrition. So we got to drive over to Ottawa. We're going to hit my grandma's house and then crush the lift. So in one of my recent videos that talks about how to break strength plateaus and maintain consistent workouts, I was talking about how, especially on like upper body lifts, like bench press and overhead press, making five pound jumps just becomes very unrealistic at a certain point. So once you reach a certain strength level, it's very beneficial to invest in some micro plates and some half pound to one pound plates so that you can make more realistic jumps in strength. So I see a lot of people stalling on their upper body lifts because they try to make these big five pound jumps and they inevitably stall. So if you make half pound to one pound jumps, you're going to reach, it doesn't seem like much at the beginning, like over the span of a month, that's only like, you know, four pounds, let's say, if you add a pound a week to your bench press over the course of a month. But, but over a year, that's a shitload. So it really adds up. So you have to really um, understand that like making small weight jumps is very, very important. So if you don't have micro plates and you're serious about you know building serious upper body strength, especially, then, um, then you need to invest in micro plates and make those smaller jumps. They can also be used for squats and deadlifts, but it's not quite as necessary because they're even bigger lifts. And you know, a lot of the time you can make those kind of adaptations on those lifts, but micro plates are super, super key. So if you don't have those, definitely pick them up and your upper body lifts are gonna go up like crazy over the period of the time because of the compounding effect of smaller weight jumps. All right, so we got to my grandma's house. We're gonna go crush this lift. Got this fucking car. Holy shit, it's icy as fuck here. Hello, Rio. Stop doing that, please. Say hi to the camera. Say, Hello, camera. Say hi to my audience. Fuck you, camera. <laughs> Unless you go off. Start that fucking thing away from my face, Rio. All right, so this is my heaviest top set on bench. You guys know all of the first exercises you should do in your routine always start with a heavy all out set and then do a couple of lighter back off sets. So that's how I train all of my big compound lifts, the big key lifts like bench, squat, deadlift, overhead press, weighted pull ups, all done in a reverse pyramid fashion. So that's the best way to start your workouts is with very heavy work, all out max intensity, and then a couple of lighter back off sets. So I did 232 for six reps, dropped the weight about 10%. This is 210, and I got nine reps. So you drop the weight about 10% for each set, rest, you know, three to five minutes and then try and get a couple of more reps for each set. So that's the most effective way to train your big compound lifts because the reason being is that you wanna lift heavy when you're fresh. So a lot of people do pyramid training and they, they, they slowly warm up to a heavy set. By the time they hit that heavy set, they're already fatigued. You're not really stimulating as much muscle growth as you can because you're not lifting at your true potential. You're not lifting as heavy as you could. And you're not stimulating as much muscle growth as a result. So this is 195. Just got 11 clean reps. This is a very good set. So just three sets on bench. And uh, if you guys watch one of my recent videos, you guys would know about how to break through a strength plateau. And one of the biggest things you can do, one of the most effective things you can do is called a weight reset. So basically when you hit a plateau or you regress in strength, you, you drop the weight about 10 to 15%. And then you slowly, over the course of a few weeks, work your way back up to your old personal best. So that's what I did on my bench. So that's why I'm not lifting quite as heavy as I used to. So I plateaued at like 242.5. I failed and then I regressed and then now I'm just working my way back up. So that's a good way to handle uh, strength plateaus. So now I went into some one-arm dumbbell rows. This is my favorite row variation. It builds the fuck out of the upper back and the forearms, and it takes the lower back out of the equation. So if you're doing deadlifts in your routine, and if you're following any of the polarity fitness routines, you're doing fucking deadlifts. But um, if you're doing deadlifts, like you don't want to tax the lower back too much in your other workouts. So I like doing these kind of chest-supported rows, and this is 90 pounds for three sets of 10 to 12. So all of the first exercises you want to do in your routine are obviously going to be the big compound lifts. And that's where you want to use the reverse pyramid style where you do a top set and then a couple of back off sets where you're going lighter. 
for the rest of the workout, it doesn't make sense to keep doing that reverse pyramid fashion because it's just way too taxing and you're better off just switching to straight sets across. So that's what I do for everything else minus my big compound lift. So I just do like three sets of 10 to 12, just getting in some quality volume. So this is, yeah, 90 pounds for three sets of 10 to 12. And yeah, this is a great, great row variation. Rows are super key, guys. You have to be rowing in your routine. It's going to build that thickness from the side and, and from the back. So if you're not rowing, you're always going to kind of look f small from like almost all angles but the front. So you got to be doing your rows and getting that thickness. It's going to carry over very well to your bench and your deadlift as well because having a strong and thick upper back and forearms is going to help you stay tight on those lifts. So it's a rows are key. All my upper body workouts are basically a press, like overhead press, bench press, or even dips, and then a row. So you can't go wrong with that. And then just a couple of isolation movements. So I went into some hammer curls here. I basically, for biceps, just rotate between hammer curls and barbell curls. Those will, those movements will give you the biggest bang for your buck when it comes to bicep movements just because they use the most muscle mass. So I don't fuck around with like concentration curls and shit like that. That stuff's fucking retarded. So I just do, do these sort of um, hammer curls, bar barbell curls. And barbell curls are good because you can micro load them and you can have a better strength curve. But I like hammer curls for the ease of uh, setup, just to pick up the dumbbells and fucking get to it. And they build the radial brachialis as well, which gives your forearms a thick look from the front. So that's why I like hammer curls a lot. They work more muscle mass than most uh, bicep curls. So same thing for these, just a few sets, three sets of, you know, 10 to 12 reps. And uh, yeah, so just straight sets across. These are 45 pound dumbbells. So literally this workout is so short and simple. It's just four exercises, three sets each. Super simple routine, but it works super well because of the focus and intensity is there and I'm getting strong at the big basic lift. So when you train in this lower volume fashion, you really have to bring the intensity to make your sets count. And that's the best way to do it because as a natural lifter, you don't want to annihilate yourself. You want to do just enough to stimulate growth and then get out of the gym, recover and get stronger. And that's how you build a great natural physique. It's not about spending hours in the gym. It's about getting in there, lifting heavy, stimulating growth, and getting the fuck out, recovering, recuperating, eating well, and then, you know, coming back stronger. So these are three sets of 12 to 15 on rear delt flies. So I like to get in a lot of uh, a lot of shoulder work. So on my other upper body workout, I'll do kind of like lateral raises or upright rows, and then on this one, I'll do either face pulls or rear delt flies. So... Just three sets, 12 to 15 with 35 pound dumbbells. That's it for this workout, guys. Super simple. Give this workout a shot. It's super, super effective for building your upper body because you're getting stronger at the bench, you're getting stronger at the rows, and that's how it's done. Short, simple, but intense and focused. All right, so the workout's done. Crushed some bench, a few sets, and then we crushed some rows. And then we did some hammer curls and the rear delt flies. As you guys will notice, I already know I'm gonna get a bunch of comments about the, the form I had on the curls. And um, a lot of what I talk about is like, the isolation movements don't really mean jack shit. Like, I throw them in there just to get a little bit of extra work in when I'm already tired. And by all means, you can do that, but they're not the bread and butter. Like, I throw in one to two kind of smaller movements Per workout because as a natural lifter your physique isn't going to be built by those lifts those are just kind of like they they constitute no more than like 10 percent of my training so i really don't take them seriously i'm not like a form nazi with them i just try and get a nice pump in in um in the muscle so for the curls i i like hammer curls really because they they bring in some more forearm and they make your arms kind of thick that person scared the fuck out of me but um yeah so we're gonna go we're gonna drive back and i'm gonna cook up a meal so we're gonna have a post-workout meal. I had some pineapple and then we're gonna cook up a dinner. So we'll talk soon. All right, so as just a little snack, I grabbed some smoked mussels. If you guys haven't tried these, then fuck, they're so good. The macros as well are fucking insane. For each can, it's like 120 calories and like 20 grams of protein. So super good snack to grab quickly. And then I cooked up a nice meal. I had some ground beef, some guac, some salsa, a couple eggs some potatoes and some broccoli so this was a fucking amazing meal all right so i hope you guys enjoyed this video 
you guys have to pick up my natural muscle building checklist. So it's a 13 point checklist that basically gives you everything you need to know about building a physique as a natural. So if you're not delivering on these 13 fundamental steps, then you are simply leaving gains on the table. So it's literally the ultimate guide to building a physique as a natural. It has everything from nutrition, training, recovery, and mindset. So it has everything you need to know. Make sure you pick it up. I'll send it to you for free. And make sure you guys check me out on Instagram. All the links will be in the description and we'll talk soon. Peace.